Hello everyone, and welcome to the second episode of Quest for Glory 1. We are a thief, we've just explored the town of Spielberg, asked a bunch of people about a bunch of things, gotten ourselves 26 points. In our inventory, we have a piece of paper, 50 small apples, two empty flasks, and the stuff we started with. We have some gold, uh, no silver. Apparently we've bought enough things, the apples and the flasks, to run us out of silver. No matter. Let's go explore where we came from. Why not? Let's look around here. The late frosts of winter give way to the greenery of spring. There is the crisp smell of cedar in the air. This forest seems to be unusually still and quiet. I hope that that remains true, because I don't want to get in combat. At least not just yet. There doesn't appear to be anybody here. We'll just go look at this uh, area we came from. Oh. Well. You are in a clearing at the edge of the forest. The road you have been following is completely blocked by a very recent avalanche. Okay, not much to do there then. Maybe we can get back where we came from to the north here. Perhaps. Again, hopefully nobody ambushes us. Oh my! What's that? A huge guy! Far from the frost field fares forth this fighter. Hunger has hurled me hither from home. My name it is known in the Northland as Brogy. Barter with blades clash or bargain with me. Brogy I be to boast of my boldness, strong as the storm that sends forth the snow. Fiercer in fighting than foes in their fury. Fear now this frost giant. Fight her and flee. Okay. Again, same thing. Okay. Um. Well. What does he want? He said something about a barter. Find me some fruit for to mellow my mead horn. Gift I will give you. Gift I will give of a gem that now glows. Jewel from Jotunheim, flare of the frost flame. Fetch to me fruit that will fill up my fists. A gem, huh? It looks like it will take a lot of fruit to fill up those fists. A gem? Glow of the frost flame that fills up the night field. A jewel that is flawless, the finest of gems. Well, we certainly want that. He wants some fruit, and we happen to have 50 small apples. Let's give him apples. Fruit you have found to fill all my food stores. Thus filled the bargain, my gem you have bought. Brogi has bothered, and all has been answered. The meat it may mellow, and now I head home. Excellent. We've gotten some points. And a gem. We have a glowing gem. This gem looks like an aurora in the night sky. Can we hold it out? Okay. Nope. Apparently not. Well, that's all we can do here. It has been avalanched. The mountains rise quickly from this point and are covered with snow. So, not much there. I wonder what else is around here. Ah, nothing there. If we do get ambushed, we can run. Ah, I wonder what's to the right here. Or east, depending on how you look at it. A lot of people call them north, east, south, and west. I don't think I care enough about it to refer to them as any particular thing. A thing! 
The air is crisp here, and you can see your breath as you walk. There is a path leading up to a dark mountain, atop which is precariously perched a purple house. A purple house? Who in their right mind would have a purple house? A sign appears. It reads, Bienvenue à Mont Magie, I think. Another sign appears. It reads, Trespassers will be towed. Ha ha ha. Well, let's save in our temporary slot, just because I don't know necessarily what's going to happen. You feel as though you have just scaled the Matterhorn in full armor. What a climb! After you finally catch your breath, you see that you have reached the rather eccentric looking house that you saw from below. And it's rather uh, bright. There is an ugly gargoyle above the entrance that is not fitting with the style. Stand fast! He who would the wizard see first must answer questions three. What is your name? Ryan. Who do you seek here? I think this is Erasmus, who the uh, magic shop person told us about. Whose spell protects the town? Uh... I don't know. Bob? Wrong. <laughs> Poof. And he just puts us back down here. Not a big deal. Ah. Wilkemann auf Zalberberg. Okay. Proceed at your own risk. And I will. Hello, Mr. Gargoyle, again. No matter how strong you feel at the bottom of the mountain, you're always more exhausted than the last time you reached the top. Which kind of makes sense. You don't give up easily, do you? Here come your questions. What is your name? Ryan. Who do you seek here? Erasmus. What is the Baron's first name? We know this one. Stefan. That is correct. The wizard will now see you. Hey, excellent. Go directly up to the tower. Do not dally. This room is full of odds, ends, and stuff. The wizard must be a real character. Ah, that must be him there in the painting. Okay. The table is bare except for a stuffed bird which faces the door. The poor stuffed peacock seems bedraggled, worn, and overused. Huh. Well, that's kind of cool. There's a donkey bird, a mummy's thing, a painting. Ah, and he disappears from the painting. Hello there, Erasmus. Come in and sit down. Fenris, our guest has arrived. Cheese, please. Ah. Okay. Well, we still have a weight cursor. Oh, okay. Um... I am a wizard of some renown. What am I, chopped liver? Am I invisible or something that you talk about me behind my front? It's hard to take you seriously when you wear that silly hat. Well, what we really need, please, the least you could do is ask me about something more interesting. What we really need is information on the curse. It would be best to wait until Erasmus puts down his cup of tea before asking any more questions. Okay. The curse Baba Yaga placed upon the Varen von Spielberg was a fine example of creative cursing. Upon von Spielberg and all his clan, this curse I now demand. What I will shall come full measure, so shall ye lose all that ye treasure. Of course, the problem is that for every curse there is an equal and opposite counter curse. A counter? A counter curse is the 
cure for a curse. It usually works against the one who cast the curse in the first place. The counter curse for the curse on the Baron goes, Come a hero from the east, free the man from in the beast. Bring the child from out the band, drive the cursor from the land. So, to break the curse, a hero must get rid of Baba Yaga in addition to all the other things. It does not reflect well on Baba Yaga. Ah, nothing reflects well upon that ogress. She has a face that would break all but a magic mirror. Ah. There are many types of magic mirrors. One of the more common types is the one that has a strange face popping up every so often. Reminds me of the one in the master bedroom. <laughs> That's not a magic mirror. No, but it does show a strange face. Have you looked in it lately? <laughs> At any rate, I used to have a nice magic hand mirror, but I misplaced it somewhere. It could be used to reflect a spell back upon the caster. Really? So if you happen upon a small golden magic mirror with a dragon on the handle, you'll know it's mine. It was the flagon with the dragon. The mirror had a leer. Oh, that's right. Well, if you find a magic mirror with a face on it, you'll know it reflects spells. Excellent! It's important for a magic user to know as many spells as possible. You never know what might come in handy. Fortunately, that doesn't really concern us. Um, what was the magic shop lady's name? Zara? Zara has a real flair for the theatric. Her method of greeting customers at her shop is showy, but effective. It's a pity she has no sense of humor. Just because she never laughs at your jokes doesn't mean that she lacks a sense of humor. It just means that she has good taste. <laughs> oh, well. What else can we ask about? Elsa. Uh, Barnard. No. Um, I think we already did that. Oh, Baba Yaga is good at curses and shape-changing spells. She has a nasty temper, so it's best to stay on her good side. You have to watch her. She cheats at cards. So do you. She started it. I just wanted to give her a taste of her own medicine. It's a shame she still beats you. <laughs> do you know the difference between a wounded Triceratops and a magic user casting the fly spell? No. One is a raging Saurus, and the other is a soaring Magus. Okay. I figured one was a dying lizard, and the other was a flying wizard. Sorry, Fenris, but he who tells the jokes gets to make up the punchlines. Ah, uh, Fenris's was better. Did you hear the joke about the witch's broom? No. That's odd. It's sweeping the valley. <laughs> that one usually floors me, but, but I'm going to brush it aside before I'm swept away with laughter. Gag. Okay. Well, well, if you really must go, poof. I think we got what we need. We need a mirror, a magic mirror. What for to remove Baba Yaga? We'll just save now that we've got all that. We can't go north or south from here, so we'll head back west. Hopefully no one bothers us. Again, we can run if we so choose. Nothing here. Ah! Hostile intent is evident. You prepare for battle. We are very likely going to die. Dodge. Oh, no dodge. He hit us even though we dodged? That's bull. It was a tough battle and you lost. Never fear. All you have to do is restore your game, and what do you mean, restore what game? Well, we did save. So, let's try this again. Oh, not cool, man. We might as well run. It doesn't, oh, not that. Control S. We have 15 of 26 stamina points. It looks like our intelligence and vitality have gone up a bit, 
we have some puzzle points and some experience. So, I happen to know that running is not going to be a problem here. We'll just continue going. Oh, a little tucked away place. I wonder what's here. Hey, a nice meadow. The meadow lies covered with a blanket of flowers, unusual for this early in the spring. It is warm, even though surrounded by the late snows of winter. The air has the fresh, clean scent of the mountains, accompanied by numerous perfume-like fragrances. A large carved stone lies flat on the ground. You feel as though someone gentle was watching over you. You feel that you are safe here. Ah. That's a mighty fine tree. The small tree is most amazing. It bears blossoms and fruit at the same time and the fruit on its boughs seems to shyly appear and disappear, shimmering. Let's get some of that. Pick fruit. The fruit is very soft and juicy. It would be impossible to keep in your pack. Okay, well, let's eat some. The sweet, juicy fruit of the tree is amazingly satisfying and refreshing. Did it give us anything? No stamina. There is flowers about. All kinds of colorful and fragrant flowers and grasses cover the meadow. Let's pick some. As you pick a variety of this sweet smelling flowers, they seem to glow in your hands. You put them safely away. I'm actually going to get a few. Look in my inventory. And I'm nowhere near my maximum carry weight, but I have 25 flowers. Let's look at that rock. The large stone appears to be ancient and deliberately placed. Marks carved into the stone almost look like writing. Really? Okay, let's get close enough. And look at them. The stone has the words Irana's Peace carved upon the top. There are some runes carved along the side. So, if anyone were going to cast a peace spell upon the town, it's probably Irana. We can rest here. After 10 minutes rest, you feel better. Check the time. Sunset approaches. Okay, we could try to make our way back to town, but we could rest here at Arana's Peace. Let's, let's save the temporary game here and Find out what's to the right here. Oh, it's already gotten dark. Oh my! That guy looks scary. The late frosts of winter give way to the greenery of spring. The forest seems to be unusually still and quiet. And that guy is going to be a huge problem. Okay, let's see if we can sneak past him. No, we cannot. Okay. Well, I don't want to fight that guy. Do you want to fight that guy? I think not. We will have to come back to that. I wonder, however, if we do this and sneak right off the bat because, as you saw, he starts up in the northeast corner and moves down to the southwest. Ah, uh, he's seen us. Okay. No matter. We will have to deal with that at another time. We can sleep here. Through the night, you sleep comfortably among the fragrant flowers. You awake as the sun begins to rise. Yes, this game does have day-night cycles, and it is actually important. Let's not mess with that giant guy. Because, honestly, I don't remember how to do it. Let's move over here and run from the goblin. Hey! This looks interesting. 
To the south and east is the forest from which you came. To the north and west are steep cliffs. There are some unusual plants growing out of the side of the cliffs. They are spitting what seems to be some kind of seed. I bet, since this is an adventure game, I need that seed. You've never seen anything quite like them. They're pretty in a grotesque way. Let's look at the seed. The large seed spins as it travels through the air. Okay, well, how am I going to get that seed? Do we have anything to use? Empty flasks, some flowers... Nothing, really. I could try and hit it with a dagger, I suppose, except I only have the one. I wonder if we can get some rocks. Ah, we pick up a few small rocks. Throw a rock at the seed. You get in position for a good throw. Ah, ah, ah. Well, throw. No, no luck. Okay, we'll continue doing that. Like I said, I believe in episode one, you can generally continue to throw the rocks or climb or whatever it is at these early stages until you skill up enough to actually do it. Which could actually be quite some time now that I think of it. Yeah, we pretty much suck at the whole throwing bit. Let's see if our, oh, not a cast, character sheet. Okay, I don't remember. Control S, of course. You see our throwing has gone up to six. Our stamina has dropped a little bit, probably because we ran mostly. Oh, nope, don't want that one. Throw rock at seed. We'll continue doing this until we hit it. Sadly, there are some fairly boring parts like so. We will have to pick up more rocks, I believe, after this one. Oh, we have three small rocks. Okay. We'll continue until we run out of rocks, pick up more rocks and continue till we get the seed. We appear to be on the right track, else it wouldn't let us continue to do this. It would just say there's really no point in doing it. Of course, this will probably get fast forwarded because it's insanely boring. However, it is necessary. After this one, we'll check to see what our skill is. There is another area. I might actually leave this for now. Actually, that sounds like a reasonably good idea. I have four small rocks. So after these four, if I haven't hit it, I'll move on. And go practice somewhere much quicker, at least. Oh, come now, you're just teasing me. That was a perfect spot for a throw. 
and nothing. Well, I'll pick up some, but I'm not going to do anything about it. Let's move on. Kind of just skirting the edges here. I haven't saved in a little while, so I'm probably going to die. Oh, we appear to be at the edge here. Um, let's, let's go ahead and save, since we're not being attacked, and move north. Oh my, what in the world is this? Looking around, you get the feeling that this is not a very friendly place to be. The sharp ends of the fence are covered with some nasty-looking green slime. Whoever did the decor here is not very good. The hut is a strange little house perched on chicken legs. Now, if anybody knows Slavic mythology, you know what this is. This is, of course, the Hut of Baba Yaga. The skulls on top of the fence have eerily glowing eyes. The large skull on the gate seems to stare vacantly at you. Hello. Oh. Baba Yaga does not welcome strangers. You have to deal with me before you can enter. Ask about Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga is the most powerful ogress around. If you have any brains, and it looks like you don't, you'll stay away from her. Uh dealing with you. All the other skulls have glowing eyes, but me? No, I don't need lovely glowing eyes. Just open and close the gate. That's all I'm good for. But if you can give me a glowing gem for my eyes, then I'll let you in the gate. Well, is it a deal or isn't it? You will remember that we got a glowing gem from the uh, frost giant guy. The deal is made then, a glowing gem in exchange for an opportunity to see Baba Yaga herself. Uh, give him the gem. You place the glowing gem inside the skull. Hey! I can see! I have eyes again! Yeah, is that what you look like? Oh well, have fun visiting Baba Yaga, and good luck! You'll need it. I'm not... I hope you can remember the rhyme. Rhyme? What rhyme? Uh-oh. I actually do know what it is. And I'm not going to go to the hut. But, now that we know about that, we can. You again? Do you really want to go back in there? Ask about rhyme. Just answer the question, will ya? Do you want back in? No. Hey, it's your life. Ask about the rhyme. The rhyme is Hut of Brown, now sit down. And punctuation is not important, nor is capitalization. Spelling, however, is. So, we know where Baba Yaga is. But we're not really going to do anything about it. So, what time is it? Mid-morning on day two? Okay, well, let's continue running about the forest. There's a bunch of goblins here. As we can see from those bits to the right and so on. Oh, what's this? You are in the Meep's Peep. The colorful furry Meeps timidly pop out of their holes from time to time. You see blue meeps, purple meeps, and occasionally a green meep. They seem to be very shy. Whenever you approach one, it hides under its rock. So we have blue, purple, and... and... green. There we are. Now, they're friendly little creatures, so I don't want to throw rocks at them or anything. They are here for a very specific purpose. And not one that we care about at the moment. Uh, we appear to be blocked in. Oh, what's this? 
a ring of mushrooms. The trees look more vibrant than most of the forest. There is a ring of mushrooms on the northwest side of the clearing. The ring of mushrooms contains mushrooms slightly larger than the ones you are used to. We can't really do anything with it now. Oh, what's this? A white stag. Let's chase after it. Oh, this is interesting. Hello, white stag. And you follow the stag into this forest corner. You feel as though the eyes of the forest are watching you. Like Irana's piece, this is a place you can sleep at no consequence. You watch the stag, fascinated with his grace and beauty. There is something special about this place. Really? Let's go take a look around. You are in a strange and beautiful part of the forest. There is something special about this place. The large, gnarled oak seems to draw your attention. Oh? <laughs> you just told me it was important. Oh well, maybe we just need to be clo- Oh, what's this? Why, hello there. I am the Dryad, Keeper of the Woods. Are you one with the woods? When someone asks if you're one with the woods, you say yes. Then you shall aid me, and I shall aid you in your quest. Bring me a seed from the spore-spitting spirea of the north, that I may plant it elsewhere in order to preserve these rare and magical plants. Okay. Thus will you become a true friend of the forest. Cool. Good deal. So, we need to get her that seed that they were spitting. And we will do that in the next episode.